crossing. We're glad you came to join us today online.
name is Pastor Ulysses Ross. I'm the pastor here at Grace Bible Church here in Florissant, Missouri. Just want to say hello and to encourage you guys to let you know that these are difficult times, but uh, we are all in it together. I am praying for you guys. Grace Bible Church family is praying for you all, and we're asking that you all continue to pray for us. One thing that I am encouraged by, and that is the Word of God, and in the Word of God it says, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So we can be rest assured to know that God is still on the throne and in control. Hey, we love you uh, and we're praying for you. Bye now. Hey, Crosshaven, good morning. Thank you guys for joining us in worship. This is my lovely assistant named? Emery. Yes. Um, today we are kicking off a brand new sermon series called When Life Gives You Lemons. Lemons. Emery. You love these things, don't you? Mm-hmm. I think they're disgusting. For you at home, just go ahead and a little vote at home. Do you think these things are nasty, or do you actually like them? Emery, uh, you think they're good? Mm-hmm. I vote they're nasty. Um, well, we're going to start this new sermon series, uh, When Life Gives You Lemons. Obviously, lemons is a metaphor for bad times, bad things. Right now, we're going through hard times, and life seems to have been giving a lot of people a lot of lemons. And as Christians, what do we do when life seems to give us lemons? Um, I found some things on the internet of just people in our culture and what they like to say when life gives you lemons. So check out this one. Uh, when life gives you lemons, keep them because, hey, free lemons. What do you think about that one, Emery? Like that one? Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, she actually would like to have free lemons. If I got free lemons, I'd be like, give, who can I give these away to? Here's another one. When life gives you lemons, squeeze them into people's eyes. What do you think about that one? No, never. Never? I would never do that. I don't like the taste of them alone, so I, I wouldn't like them in my eyes either. I don't think my eyes would like them either. Here's another one. Uh, this one, for some reason, has the minions on it. I don't know why, but when life gives you lemons, freeze them and throw them as hard as you can at the people making your life difficult. What do you think about that one, Emery? <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> well, tell everybody what you like to do with lemons. I like to make lemonade. Yeah, and how do you do it? Well, you just squeeze lemons in your cup, and then you put water and add sugar. Yeah, but if you ever drink this juice straight, nasty. Not good. What's the secret ingredient? Sugar. Amen. That is the secret ingredient to a lot of things. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to dismiss my lovely assistant here a little bit, but what we're going to do is start off our new sermon series called um, what do you do when life gives you lemons? Well, obviously, when life gives you lemons, we all know, make lemonade. That's what you do. And each week as we look at the, the scriptures, we're going to look at a different thing that we ought to be doing when life gives us lemons. And today, we're going to focus on this. When life gives you lemons, stay positive. Stay positive. I found this quote. It says, you might not be able to control your circumstances, but you can control your response to your circumstances. I don't know if you're like me, but when life gets hard, when I get a bunch of lemons, I kind of pout. I get sour just like those lemons are. Actually, when I taste a real life uh, lemon, people make fun of me because of the faces I look, I make. Do you guys do that too? Like you're like, Ugh. I just, I'm just disgusted by it. But actually metaphorically, when life gives me lemons, I kind of do the same thing uh, emotionally or maybe even spiritually, where I just am repulsed, I resist, I back off, I complain, I say, this is disgusting, and I gripe and I whine. That's generally what I do in my own sinful nature when life gives me lemons. I just get my complaints on. But today, I'm going to preach this to myself, and I'm preaching it to you too. When life sends you lemons, make sure that you stay positive. Because if we're not careful, we'll just let it become an excuse to be negative. A negative outlook never leads to a positive life. It never does. Um, every time I get all out of whack and I'm complaining and I'm, I'm just in a bad mood, I mean, it doesn't make anyone's life better. It doesn't make me feel better. It doesn't make my family feel better. A negative outlook just makes everybody feel negative. And so if you're going to have lemons, you might as well make some lemonade out of this. Look for the silver lining in the cloud or try to be positive in any way that you can because if you want to have a negative, a positive life, you can't be negative. So to be positive, have a positive outlook. 
Also, look at this. Staying positive is not being delusional. It's actually being biblical. This is not just, hey, uh, just think happy thoughts or just try harder and it'll all work out, which, yeah, maybe that's true. But that's not really what the Bible is going to tell us today. We're supposed to stay positive because that's what the Bible actually says. If we see beyond the here and now, if we see beyond the temporary lemons that we have right now, there's life beyond these lemons, and it is guaranteed that it is going to be good. Positive things are going to happen. That's not just some made-up, well-wishing kind of thought. No, it is reality according to the Bible. For the Christian, there is life beyond the here and now. We have absolute confidence, total assurance that one day this is all going to be really, really good. And God's even going to use the lemon time for our good. So that's true. It's always been true. But for some time, for some reason, whenever the hard times come, when the lemons get thrown at me, I just forget those things. So today is my reminder to myself. It's my reminder to you. Stay positive. There are really good things that happen through the midst of this lemon experience. And also, once you get past this on the other side, even better. Look at those things. Stay positive. So here's why I say it's biblical. Look at this. In Romans 8, 28, it says, We know. This is not just thinking, not just guessing, not just hoping. No, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. That is truth. We can bank on it. It is biblical. And actually to think or act or feel anything differently is to be contrary to the word of God. We have every reason in the world, if we're a Christian, to be positive even when life is bad. Even when the limits start coming, you need to start looking at the positive. That's for your own good, but it actually is biblical. So here's a couple of thoughts. Think about what you think about. Think about what you think about. A couple of things that I think are really key here. As you think about how important it is that you stay positive, a couple of bullet points here. What consumes your mind controls your life. You have the ability to open up the floodgate of negativity or to shut it down and open up the floodgates for positivity. You have the ability to control that. But what consumes your mind, it controls your life. And the life you have is a reflection of the thoughts that you think. Um, this, uh, this is a hard one for me to grab. Often I wonder, why am I so miserable? It's because I keep thinking negative thoughts and I'm just making myself go down this downward spiral. And I'm partly the one that's at fault. I mean, it doesn't matter if I had one lemon or 10 lemons. If I'm doing a negative uh, downward spiral of my own thinking, uh, I'll make a mountain out of this molehill. And the problem isn't the lemon or the number of the lemons. The problem is my thinking. Also, the quality of your life will never exceed the quality of your thoughts. So today, let's analyze or assess our thoughts. How about for you? You got a lot to gripe about, I'm sure. Somehow, some way, this lemon experience has affected you. You got a taste of something that you didn't want, lemon juice. And maybe you're one of those weird people who like lemons. Okay, okay. But, you know, go work with me here. Work with me. You know what I mean? That there's some things that have happened in your life that you really wish weren't happened. Even if it's as small as, hey, you, you're a kid here and you wish you could get together with your friends more often. That kind of stinks, right? Life is a lemon. And so what I want you to do is to see, you know, instead of griping and whining and complaining, stay positive. You know what? Good things can come through this. God's doing some things in you during this time if we'll stay positive. Look at Romans chapter 5. This is our focal passage for today. In the first few verses of chapter 5, here's what it says. Therefore, and Paul has just been talking about how great it is that we are forgiven and in a perfect relationship with God because of what Jesus Christ has done. Therefore, because of all this greatness with God, therefore, since we have been made right with, in God's sight by faith, and he's going to talk about some great positive things we ought to be dwelling on, praising God for. And the first thing here is we have, number one, we have peace with God. Don't forget how great that is. We have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. So this is talking about our past. We had all these sins, and Jesus has died and taken care of all of our past. That is something to praise God for. Because of our new relationship with Jesus Christ, we now have peace with God. And then continuing, another thing, verse 2, he says, Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this, this is the second thing, into the place 
of undeserved privilege where we now stand. So now we're talking about the present. We just talked about how Jesus did something on the cross to help us be forgiven of our past, and now we have peace with God. Now he's talking about the present. We have this place of privilege. We have access to the throne room of God, and we are ushered into his presence by none other than Jesus Christ. It's like we have the key to the palace, to the king, and Jesus himself escorts us into the presence of God, and there we stand in the presence of God. Wow. We don't have to freak out. We have to run away. We don't have to worry about him condemning us. We are now forgiven of our sins. So the past is behind us because of Christ. And now the present blessing is that we now have been ushered into the presence of our almighty God because of the grace of Jesus Christ. That's also a good thing to think about as we were talking about staying positive. So we looked at the past. We looked at the present. Now back here, the third thing he says, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. So now we're talking about a future thing that we have to be thankful for. We get to look forward to the future when we are going to share in God's glory. What this means is, remember, the Bible says that uh, we have all fallen short of God's standard. We've all fallen short of God's glory. But the Bible also says because of what Jesus Christ has done, we have the hope that we'll be forgiven of our sin and we'll stand before God holy and righteous and pure and everything that's wrong will be gone. Every lemon will be gone. Every sin, every sickness, every sorrow, it's gone. And one day we have that hope that we will be in a place with God with perfection. And that is not a myth. That is not just a hope. That is reality because of the fact of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection and our faith and hope in him, it is going to happen. So don't just get so focused on these little limits that keep coming your way. Don't forget the good things that have happened because of Jesus Christ. Your past has been put behind you. You have present access to the throne room of God right now. And you have this future where all of the lemons of life will one day be gone. And we will be glorious like God originally intended for us to be. That's a lot to be positive about. There's a lot of lemons. But you know what? We're looking in here. We're finding a lot of gold nuggets to look at. Look at these three things on the screen here. Number one, the positive things we've got. Number one, peace with our past. Number two, a place of privilege for our present. And number three, hope of glory for our future. And then look in the next uh, couple of verses, verses three through five. It says, we can rejoice too. Now he's continuing. There's even more good stuff to be positive about. Now he's going to get to the part that we're really uh, is relevant to us when life gets hard. We can rejoice too. When we run into problems and trials, and that is not a misprint, when the lemons come, we have reason to rejoice, for we know, not just think, not just hope. Again, this is a knowing kind of hope. For we know that they help us develop endurance. So the trials bring endurance. And then number four, uh, verse four, and endurance develops strength of character. And then character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope, it will not lead to disappointment. It's not going to let us down. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So on the screen here, how good can come from bad? We just saw a little sequence of order. There are trials in our life where you could say the lemons come but these develop our endurance. And as this endurance develops, we are developing character. This is the idea of like something that's proven, that our character is proven through the trials. Like when fire comes and burns off all the impurities and what's left, it's proven. It's got de- proven character that's going to rise up in you because the, the hard times, the lemons, get rid of the stuff that shouldn't be there. So you're going to have this proven character and that eventually it just builds our hope for salvation. So it is a repeating cycle. And the more we have this hope, the more we're able to take on even more trials and more lemons. And then it just develops more patience and endurance and more character developed inside of us, gives us more hope for the, uh, the future of, of salvation, which helps us just be more equipped. It's like it's an upward spiral. So you have the choice. Do you want to go with the downward spiral of negativity or do you look in the scriptures at all the great things that God can do in you during these times? You cannot learn to swim on dry land. I know that doesn't sound like something too profound, but think about it. You can't learn how to swim as you're sitting on dry land, or you can't develop, you can't become like this old experienced uh, sailor if you never get off the shore, right? You can't be this like awesome 
expert trained military guy if you never get into the war, right? You're never going to be a great karate person if you never get into fights, right? This is what makes us stronger. This is what makes us leaner. This is how we build our spiritual muscle. So thank God that there are things in our life, even lemons, that are helping to make us stronger, that are making us more dependent on God. All these things are really, really good. And unless you get into these hard times, you're not going to uh, have the circumstances that are actually going to be what makes you better. And you're not going to learn how to swim by observing. you got to jump into this pool and figure it out. And that's what problems do. They force us to get in there and to grow our muscles. Rick Warren said this, God is more concerned with your character than your comfort. That's a little bit disturbing and scary. But God really wants our character. I think if we look at our prayer requests, many times it's like, God, please comfort me. Please make this easy. Please solve all my problems. And I don't want to make light of that. There are legit problems out there. And Jesus does invite us to come and bring our stresses and our worries to him. That's not wrong. But what I'm saying, though, is that when our agenda is to make everything nice and comfortable, but God's agenda is to develop character through endurance and hardships and to build character, to strengthen your hope, to make you better and stronger and wiser. Um, it's almost like we're, we're having a competing agenda with God sometimes. And we can pray with all of our might, make those lemons go away. But God's basically saying, I've got an agenda for your life that actually includes the lemons. So learn what you can from the lemons. They're strategically placed there by a loving father who is going to develop good things inside of you because of them. So here's the wrong question for us to ask. What's happening to me? And a better question is, what's happening in me? Instead of asking what's happening to me, ask what's happening in me. I know when uh, you're stressed and you're worried, you're thinking about your problems all the time and you're just constantly assessing, boy, how bad is this for me? How bad this stinks? What is happening to me? But a better question is, what's happening in me? What kind of character is God trying to develop in me? What is he trying to strengthen inside of me? How is he refining my life's agenda according to his, his agenda? What is God trying to do in me? And then remember it talked about hope in that passage. Remember this, what it said. This hope will not lead to disappointment. We happen to live in a world that is full of false hope. Things that always let you down. Uh, any career, any relationship, I mean, they're all flawed. There's nothing that's perfect. There's only one Savior, and it's Jesus. And anytime we put anything in His place, it's going to wreck us. I mean, it's, it's not going to hold us up. Things are always going to fall apart. The, the, things just don't get better over time. They generally fall apart. There's uh, all kinds of principles about that, right? But the thing is, God wants us to still keep staying positive and to remember that this hope that is only from God is a hope that is not going to let us down. You are one day, if you're a believer in Jesus, in Jesus Christ, you are going to be able to be with Him one day and there will be no more limits. That day is absolutely, definitely going to come. And you have the total assurance that your loving Father is going to use the limits of your life for your good. Now, to follow through on Paul's thinking here in Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, says, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time, and he died for us sinners. And now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person. I don't think I would. Though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. He sent his son to die for us when we weren't especially uh, worthy, I guess is the word when we didn't have our act together, when we were kind of snotty and gripey and whiny, when we uh, rejected him, we've trusted in ourselves, we tried to fill in the gap with all kinds of false saviors, we rejected him and decided to do our own thing and sin against him, and then God sends his son to die for people like that. That is astounding. What a great demonstration of God's love. 
So we have so much to be thankful for because of Jesus Christ. And then in verse 11, it says this. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Oh, I love that phrase. I know you do too. To be friends of God. I know when you think about God sitting on his throne, and you maybe recall Isaiah chapter 6 where Isaiah gets a glimpse of God on the throne, and wow, it's surprising. Even the angels are guarding themselves with their wings because God is so holy. And in a way, it's kind of terrifying to even imagine what it would be like to be literally right there in front of God himself. But we have access to the throne room because of Jesus Christ. Yes, the Bible even said here, we weren't that lovely, but God came and sent his son to save us. And now we get to be friends of God. So, Cross Heaven, I hope that you're encouraged. I mean, you're a friend of God. He's not only our friend, he's our father. And you know that any good, loving father only wants the best for his kids. I know that many of us are going through hard times, some of us more than others. Some of you are going through really, really hard times. I don't want to minimize that. I know that's a huge deal. But you can bring all your worries and cares to a God who loves you enough to die for you. Here's the thing that bothers us. We hate these little things. I hate these little things. But God's going to use these somehow to make you better. He's going to develop you as his child to make you more like Jesus Christ. And as you go through that cycle, you're going to become better at swimming, if you will. You're going to become a better sailor, if you will. Um, the metaphor is you are become more and more godly, more and more mature. So stay positive. God is up to something in you. He's not just trying to do something to you. No, he's trying to do something in you. And no matter how bad it gets, we know that God's always going to use these things for our good. So if you're here today and you've never really given your life to Jesus, uh, what a great opportunity. Today could be your day where you say, God, I've been trying to save myself. I've been trying to fill the whole of my life with career or money. And I just got to admit that I've, I've sinned. I've done things my own way. I'm on the throne of my life. And I hope that in your heart you sense the offense that that is to a holy God. And you know that God sent his son Jesus to die for you because he loves you. Even though you've rejected him, even though you've been rebellious, he loves you. He died for you. And I hope that you'll trust him and say, God, I want to ask for forgiveness for my sins. I want to place my whole life into your hands. Would you take my sins and pay for them on the cross, Jesus? And now I'm going to walk in the middle of life that's full of lemons. I'm going to take you at your word and trust you know what you're doing and everything in my life is going to be used for my good to make me more like you. So, Crosshaven, let's be positive this week. Right now we're going to be able to listen to a song about the blessings of God. And it's a, a th- song that's written based on way back in the book of Numbers when God gave a blessing that Aaron and the priests were supposed to be able to give over the people of Israel. And the Bible says that when Aaron and the priests gave this blessing, they were giving this blessing on behalf of God to his people. So here's what we're going to do today. As you listen to this next song, I want you to know this is basically right out of Scripture, where the heart of God says, I want human beings to express my blessings to them. So this goes all the way back to the book of Numbers where this song is hopefully going to be a way to minister to you. I know you've got a lot of lemons in life. I know there are worries and stresses, but your loving God sent you a message way back in the book of Numbers to let you know there is a blessing for you. Will you stay strong? Will you stay positive? God hasn't forgotten you. Let's rejoice in how great God is, even when life gives us a whole bunch of these lemons. You guys have a good week.
face shine upon you, be gracious to you, Lord, turn his face toward you.